Welcome to the second episode of the ukulele bass build. If you haven't seen the previous episode, make sure you do so we are on the same page. I'm scraping some little glue squeeze outs around the linings with my tiny chisels and run it over the corners of the end block. Now I'm starting to work on the bracings. On the first episode, we cracked wood pieces along the grain and sliced them parallel. Now it's time to plane and square them up. I made a small jig to plane the wood to the same thickness, in this case 8mm. This will trap the boards in place and because the left side is screwed, I can remove it and adapt it to different width boards. I use spruce and mahogany to make the bracings. It's recommended to use lightweight and stable woods. I sanded the mahogany top and run my hand across the board to fill and mark any high spots and hope everything was reasonably consistent since I don't have a drum sander or any specific thickness measuring tools. The final thickness was 2.5 millimeters. I love using double-sided tape, as you can clearly see along this entire build. I wasn't sure how I could make the rosette completely by hand without taking up days and lots of trial and error, so I invited my buddy x to help out with this part. I carved the ring contour on a 1 8 inch piece of paduk, which is the same wood I used for the strip on the back of the ukulele. Now I can concentrate on making some super thin strips out of maple to create two contrasting rings. I kept going back and forth between the workbench and the bandsaw, cleaning and cutting, cleaning and cutting. Here I wanted to clean the rough sawn sides on each strip, but unfortunately I didn't get the best results. What happened was that the thickness got thinner where the double sided tape was, so that resulted in some gaps between the rings. It was a bit hard to press them in place. I ended up adding some shims to press the maple strips a little better towards the inside of the ring. I dropped the low viscosity CA glue everywhere.
To recess the matching ring on the ukulele top, I set the zero point on the easel software as my center point because I found it easier to align with the center cross on the wood. Now I can cut the inlay and cut the sound hole. I don't recommend you getting your hand so close to the bit like I do have here. I was just afraid that the centerpiece would pop out and fly or hit the bit and I knew exactly where the spindle was going. Back to the bracings, I cut some notches on the horizontal bracings to fit the double center ones and glue those in place. Before jumping on the top and back glue ups, I fill up some tiny gaps between the sides and the linings with epoxy and left it to cure. At several points on the build, I did lightly punch the pieces to hear how they sounded like and I'll bring the microphone closer so you get a better idea. Some of the steps might not make much sense in terms of chronology because I started to work on this part and then thought and searched about these other parts and made some progress on those, then went back to the step I had left behind. And this was mostly due to not knowing exactly what I was doing and always being afraid to do something wrong and keep checking and rechecking and rethinking some steps. Shipping the braces was quite challenging as well as satisfying. Since this is meant to be a bassy instrument, I found out that by removing material in the middle would make the instrument more deep sound and resonant. So this type of bracing is called scallop bracing. For the soundboard bracing, or the board that will be on top, I am using a cross pattern and I will glue the center of the cross fairly close to the sound hole which will also give it a better response for low tone notes. I shape the bracing the same way by removing material in the middle portions and removing material on the sides of the taller areas, creating sort of triangular shapes. The idea is to get the bracings as lightweight as possible without compromising the strength. To make the bridge plate, I laid some blue tape to get the correct shape and angle, so I can easily transpose that to the piece of mahogany. The bridge plate is where the bridge is going to be placed on the other side of the top and drilled to allow the strings to pop through. That area is going to have a lot of pressure, so that's why you need to reinforce it.
to give a nice detail on the, let's say, the butt of the ukulele, I will inlay a trapezoidal shape that will also give some continuity to the back paduk strip. So I clamped it in place and run a thin blade saw, keeping it against the side of the trapezium. Then I cut two other random lines inside the area to make it easier to chisel off. Now that the soundboard is done, I can start thinking on gluing it to the side frame, but before, there are some little recesses to make so that the end of the bracing have a place to go and the top can sit flush against the sides and linings. I made a Topps clamping jig that I found on an amazing video from Greenfield Guitars. His jig is made out of clear rubber hosepipe and the idea is just brilliant. I ended up using some regular garden hose pipe that I had laying around and it worked like a charm. You just need two clamps to apply even pressure along the entire perimeter. Oh, I almost forgot I wanted to place a light inside so that I could easily see any possible gap. After checking that no gap was visible, I thoroughly inspected the seam and everything looked fine. After removing the mold, I gave it one coat of shellac, which I didn't really like in the end. The shellac cans I see on the American Woodworker shops could be a different recipe from this one, but I really hated how it ended up sticky for some days and left an uneven shine. I can now repeat the process for the back of the box. In this case I had to make room for the end and neck blocks. I used the masking tape trick again to transpose the correct shapes to the soundboard and remove the remaining material.
This time I tried to use some alcohol to thin the shellac a little bit, but it became identical with shinier areas than others. Anyway, it is protected and I guess it is what matters the most since you barely see the interior faces. I kept thinking about every step like 100 times a week and actually ordered all the components needed before I really initiated the build. I'm talking about the pickup and preamp and machine heads and fret wire. I also kept studying the best time to include those and right before closing the box I noticed that the end pin jack was pretty small so I had to do some extra work. I started to drill some holes on the side, but halfway I thought this might not be the best idea since I still have to apply pressure to glue the back and I was afraid that that area might get fragile. I went ahead and did the rest of the steps instead. I trimmed the top flush and worked on the recess to fit the end pin jack that I previously said that it was too short. On the first episode I mentioned that I shouldn't have made the neck block mortars all the way through, so here I'm fixing that. I can finally close the box and hope for the best. Still fascinated with the garden hose clamp. There is a lot of sanding to do now and I'll see you on the next episode where I'll be working on the neck. Thank you so much for watching and for following me during this fantastic and challenging journey. Special thanks to Inventables and to all my Patreon supporters who always have my back. Stay tuned for next Sunday's video and go get your hands dirty!